fun today. I'm sharing some more IKEA hacks with you. I found a ton of IKEA products in my house that are desperately begging me to hack them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Without further ado, let's get into the hacks. For this first project, I'm going to make two small lampshades using this set of two baskets that you can pick up for £4.50. To hang these from the ceiling, I'm taking some black twine and I'm threading that underneath the bottom of the basket. I wish I had some thicker twine, but with it being locked down, I didn't want to go out and get any just for the sake of this project, so I'm using what I had. But if you can find a thicker string in a matching colour, then that would be much better. You could also spray paint these to be a different colour, but I left them black. Cut your piece of string longer than you think you're gonna need it. I promise you this will be very important in the long run. I didn't realize how long I wanted the drop to be and having a bit of extra string was really helpful. Now I'm gonna use these click lights. They come from Poundland, three for five pounds, and they actually have a remote, which I think is very fancy for Poundland. I'm gonna attach them in the bottom of the basket, but they're not the right color, so I'm first using some washi tape to cover up the part where the actual light bulb is so that I can paint them black. I used some black furniture paint that I had lying around. You could spray paint this, use craft paint or even acrylic, whatever you have, because they're not gonna be touched very often if you use the remote, so the paint shouldn't really scratch off. To install these into your shade, just peel back the sticker on the bottom and then place them into your basket. You could also use a little bit of hot glue if you feel like the sticker isn't going to be enough. Now you're ready to hang them up from a hook on your ceiling and you've got two very simple basket lampshades, perfect for renting if you don't want to install a lampshade in a really obscure corner of your room. For this next project, I'm actually undoing an old IKEA hack that got damaged in the sun. I made this really cute little circle table that I added these gold vintage legs to. Unfortunately, the front of it got completely destroyed when I left a basket on top of it and left it in the sun for a couple of weeks. This was so stupid. <laughs> In an attempt to revive it, I tried to sand it off first by hand and then with my detail sander. And even though I did this for a very long time, we didn't get very far. Believe it or not, I sanded this for a very long time and all that happened was I created a lot of scuffs and scratches in the wood and it was getting kind of soft so I decided in the end to give up and paint it white but I think this would look lovely if you left it natural as well. My plan for this piece is to attach a mirror and a mini shelf to the front of it so I'm using this mirror that I found in B&M a while ago. I think it was about £3.99, very inexpensive and all I'm doing is taking the chain off by detaching the jump rings from the side. To attach the mirror to my IKEA Lazy Susan, I wanted to add these smart strips on the back. They're kind of like Velcro command style strips. And I did this so that I could maneuver the piece around and remove it if I wanted to. So I just added that kind of to the top of my piece. I wanted to make sure that there was a larger gap at the bottom so I can add my shelf. Speaking of the shelf, I had to make it first. I just took a very small piece of wood. You can use whatever size you'd like as long as it fits. And again, I used my saw and my mitre box to create a piece that was ever so slightly larger than the Lazy Susan. I used my wood glue to attach it first to the front of the mirror, but I'm also gonna use nails to attach it to the back afterwards. I just wanted to get it in place to make sure it wasn't gonna move around. I left it to dry for a few hours before attaching my nails. I went with four in the back to make sure it was nice and strong. Mm -hmm. 
And in order to hang the piece up on the wall, I'm taking some thick macrame style cord and I'm wrapping that around the base of the turntable. This is gonna become my hanging system. I cut it down to size and tied a knot around the top, making sure it was very firmly tied in place so it wasn't gonna come undone and smash the mirror all over the floor. We know I have smashed far too many mirrors on this channel. I have about 70 years of bad luck, so I don't want any more. This is how the mirror looks when it's on the wall. It's just a very minimal piece that I had fun making and it's the perfect size shelf just to add a few small items that you might want to reach for in the morning. For the next project, I had a bunch of IKEA tongs that I had for another project that didn't happen, so I want to use them and this old IKEA storage box that has seen better days. So I'm gonna upcycle this a little bit because I've been using it for many, many years and it needs a refresh. I started by pulling all the tongs apart. Are they tongs? I think they're like salad tongs, right? Um, and then I just measured on the front of my box where I was gonna cut them. I wanted these pieces to be the exact width of the front of the door, so I replicated this measurement across four pieces of wood. And when I was ready, I took them to my tiny mitre box with my tiny saw and I sawed off all of the excess. To sand the edges, I actually ended up using an emery board because I had it to hand, but you can obviously use sandpaper. I'm just getting creative here. I made sure they were nice and smooth, and when my four pieces were ready, I wanted to attach them, but we're not gonna attach them to the front of the drawers. We're attaching them to the back, which will become the new front. To add a little bit extra to this hack, I decided to use a wood stain on the outer edges of the box that I thought might match with the front handles that I've just added. It was a slightly different color in the end, but it's okay, it just gives it a little bit of a different look. So I let that dry and then I was ready to put it all together. And this is how my little IKEA hack storage unit turned out. And last but not least, we have a planter hack. I'm using two different sized bowls from Ikea to create a modern style planter. I actually made a DIY like this years ago in an Ikea hack project, but I wanna upgrade it a little bit and make it look a little bit more modern. So I started by taking off all of the stickers to make sure the bowls were nice and clean, and then I used a little bit of super glue to attach the bowls together. I put the larger one on the bottom just for the time being, but I think I might flip them around when it's time to put the plant inside. Leave them to dry overnight, and then you can go ahead and spray paint it whatever colour you want. I used a black hammered metal paint from Rust-Oleum. I love the texture and the final effect that it gives. And this is how it turned out. You can put a fake plant or a real plant as long as there's drainage in the pot into this piece. It was just a very fun and simple idea to make. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of videos you'd like to see from me next and what you'd like to see me DIY. I hope this video gave you a few ideas of hacks that you might like to try for yourself. And with all of that being said, I guess I should sign off. So happy IKEA hacking and I'll see you next time. Bye.